Our first category is Glue Player of the Year. Glue Player of the Year. Glue Player of the Year. Let's go! And the nominees are... Kyler Murray, Paris Johnson Jr. You know that, hey, he's a great player. He plays the game at a high level. It's not always going to be perfect, but I never expect him to stay down after a bad game or a bad performance or a bad rep. I mean, he's the same guy on the sideline no matter what happened the previous drive, and I think you see that week to week in the way that he goes out there and plays on Sunday. Buda Baker. Obviously the physical things on the field, but then also the football character off the field, uh, the accountability, the dependability, the, uh, the smarts, the toughness, and really Buda embodies all those things. And the winner is... Buda Baker! <laughs> this is Buda's first nominee as the Cardinals Glue Player of the Year in 2023. Nice. Way to go, okay, all right. Way to go, Buda. Uh, <laughs> all right. Buda got the glue guy? Buda got the glue guy. I did. I'm guessing you didn't nominate Buddha. I'm just saying right now, of course, that's all right. And, you know, the Academy says Buddha hey, got There is actually the an Academy guy. that voted on this. That's right. They got the glue guy award. Um... I would never refer to Buddha as a glue guy. A glue this guy is, is why you're not doing his acceptance. A glue speech. guy is a guy that is just a pro. He's a pro and he goes about his job and he does his job and you know. So what part of that is not Buddha? The well, <laughs> Buddha's only one of the best safeties in the football universe. He's much more than a glue guy. He's one of the best safeties, if not the best safety in the oh, National okay, Football Okay, so I see League. what you're saying. It, it, there's a certain level that once you hit it, you can't be the glue guy. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Is that what you're, that's yes. essentially what you're saying. Okay, yes. newcomer of the year. Newcomer of the year. Let's go! And the nominees are... Kaiser White. Fires middle of the end zone, picked off! Kaiser White with the interception, and then might do in Dallas! Paris Johnson Jr. Paris has actually been out there, um, I think it's actually 100% of the snaps. And so, you know, for, for any player um, to do that is is a testament to their, their durability, their availability, um, and then their productivity. Michael Wilson. Shotgun set for Murray. Wilson split left. Play clock at four. Snap to Murray. Blitz coming. Murray backing up. Floats into the end zone. Middle of the end zone. Pulled in by Wilson for a touchdown. Jonathan Gannon. I mean, you want to win for a guy like that. You know what I'm saying? You want to you do anything. I, I think he's the type of guy, you, you know what I'm saying, you, you run through a wall for because you know, you know he's got your backs. And the winner is? Jonathan Gannon oh. in his first season as Cardinals head coach he came in and built a foundation with the pads mentality I could tell I don't know who's won any of these I could tell by the look on Aaron's face that Jonathan Gannon won that before she read it <laughs> is that right yes. because she knew it was gonna go I just, me. Was I gonna could just jab me right I could just the tell ribs. the way the way that she like looked as she was about to read it I was like yep Jonathan look, Gannon won nice you know what I think of JG <laughs> And You're how I think. Have to do this all I, over. No, I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> you know what I think, and this is the reason why she did it. Yes. So you because have to find what a newcomer is. That's exactly right. The male content that she is. There wasn't that's a, why she did it. It just kicked me in the face. There was an actual <laughs> academy that voted on these. Aaron didn't pick the winners. I could just, but she knows the winners. Who, who put JG into the category? Well, that was probably her. But we're she talking didn't pick about the winners. players. We're the not nominee. talking about coaches. We're talking about players. Well, that's the context. Kaiser White <laughs> was the only player in that category to get votes. Hey, that was my outside nominee. of head coach Jonathan Gannon. I nominated Kaiser White. Yeah. Whoever voted, thank you. I I picked Kaiser White for the newcomer of the year. Oh, so did I. I think the problem with the Kaiser White pick because he was unbelievable. He led the team in tackles yes. and he didn't even play the whole season. Eleven games, Mel. But what have you done for me lately? You know, out of sight, out of mind. So I feel like if he maybe got hurt at the beginning of the season and then came back, but people can't remember. The Dallas Cowboys game, that was Josh Dobbs. Yes. We're, we're arguing who the players could be. But oh, see, I'm Well, then arguing. next time you say newcomer, 
player. I, I'm now looking at the list, hoping there's a way. <laughs> I'm just assuming we all know that. <laughs> that every category it's, it's, is open to interpretation. Players that we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know if the next category is going to be able to bother Wolf the way Glue Player of the Year and Newcomer of the Year. So both of the winners so far, Buddha Baker, in case you're just joining us, won Glue Player of the Year, and Wolf came unglued, which was interesting since it was the Glue Player of the Year. And uh, Jonathan Gannon wins Newcomer of the Year. Okay, so you guys are doing this on purpose. I, right? I, I nominated mean, guys, Kaiser White. This is, right? I'm not doing it on purpose. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, who put JG into the category? The Academy. <laughs> the I'm, Academy that might have been me. But people okay, voted, all though. Right, but Rick, people, J- people voted, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, people did vote for Jonathan okay, Gannon. Okay, but you know what? You could build an argument, JG, yes, if you're going to say players and coaches, but we're not talking about coaches. We're not talking about general managers. We're not talking about any of that. We're talking about players that have actually played on the field. That's the context in which we're giving out these awards. Well, so I was just sitting here yesterday and I was like, what about coaches? What about Jonathan Gannon? He's a newcomer. Yes. And Aaron was like, sure. <laughs> Okay. And so that's how we decided it. But okay, the point great. is, great. he got the most votes. He got the most <laughs> votes, too. It's not just that Rick threw him in there. It's that everybody out there in the newsroom voted well, for Well, see, him. it's kind of funny because Wolf saying, oh, it's got to be the players. It's got to be the players. Of course, he has the players mentality. Yeah. But I think he's trying to rig this. Oh, it sounds like, like he it. wants his people to win. Yes. So he can't have any other good just nominees. He wants it. nothing but offensive linemen to win every award. That's... I, that's, that's <laughs> And so far, Wolf is a resounding 0 for 2. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait till 1230 when we do offensive. Uh, that does say don't, player don't of the year. make assumptions based on means. Just never make assumptions. Right? It does, it does don't assume. say offensive and defensive. Well, it says POY. So. We all know what the assume thing is that your fifth grade teacher would tell you about. Your teacher told you that in fifth grade? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> what school did you go to? <laughs> Seriously. It was school of hard knocks. West Virginia. Oh. So now we are going to go with Offensive Player of the Year. Offensive Player of the Year. <laughs> and the nominees are... Kyler Murray. Murray takes, turns, back to throw, off a of bootleg, now runs, left side, 45-50. Far side, 40, 35, 30, 25, and out of bounds inside the 25 at the 23-yard line. That's a dimension that Kyler Murray brings that most do not. James Conner. What that guy's been to this team, to myself, um, you know, to the offense has been, you know, I can't put words on it. Trey McBride. Five-step drop. Steps up, throws high over the middle, but what a catch inside the 30-yard line by McBride. And the winner is James Conner. Hey, James Conner eclipsed 1,000 yards this season for the first time in his career. He played in 13 games for the Big Red as he finished the season with 208 carries and seven touchdowns. I like it. Way to go, James. I, I, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Once oh, again, I'm, I'm just saying, no, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and we did not we did not talk about this basically. No, clearly we didn't that talk about any of this. the problem with it right now. <laughs> you can't be the MVP and an offensive player. We haven't you, named MVP. You, I, I, I understand okay. that. But um, that's why I would disagree with him being the offensive player <laughs> of the year. Because to me, the <laughs> offensive player of the year is a guy who did something really, really special. And I'm not talking about stats. Kyler Murray proved he could actually play in a a scheme that the NFL demands that every quarterback can actually execute in the year 2024 of our Lord. And Kyler Murray proved that. He went out and played under center. He was, let's face it, I mean, when he came back and the way he played that first game against the Atlanta Falcons, And the 4-3 that was evident for everybody watching that game, you could see he was physically back and how physically special he truly is. He was the offensive player of the second half, in my opinion, because of what he was doing and what he accomplished. And how much better, by the way, the Cardinals looked. So to me, he's the offensive player of the year. I'm guessing 
that he didn't get Offensive Player of the Year because he didn't play the whole season. I will tell you that each one of these categories, you have now openly disagreed with the uh, the Academy. I, mean, I don't yes. know what happens when you disagree with the Academy. I'm I can not tell you this. Trying to be. I can tell you this. It just based on like movie award shows. If you disagree with the Academy too much, you never win an award yourself. Yeah, so just right, be aware. Exactly. <laughs> like I've won any. Well, you're not going to win one um, next year. That's for sure. I I tell you, my pick was actually Trey McBride, using the same logic as you that I did vote for James Conner as yes, MVP. Of course. And, and you know, it's like in the NFL, a quarterback always seems to win MVP. I'm going full NFL, but offensive player of the year seems to be where the best receiver or running back, or sometimes it's a quarterback. But so I used your same logic, but it's funnier when you yeah. are upset about it. Yeah, but again, um, offensive player of the year, Kyler Murray, James Conner. Yeah, I think we all know. I mean, we know what James Conner is going to get at some point in time, and um, you can't win them both. Well, are you ready for Defensive Player of the Year? I am. As All right, here we go. Defensive Player of the Year. And the nominees are... Buda Baker. I mean, he's, he's one of the best I've been around in a short period of time with what you're looking for in uh, a player on your team. Jalen Thompson. Picked off. Picked off by Jalen Thompson, run into the ball, over the shoulder grab, two-handed snag, takes the knee in the end zone. Dennis Gardeck. In trouble, moving left, being chased, gets out of there, but then sacked by Gardeck. At the 18-yard line, a flag is down. Stills almost had the snack, uh, the sack. And the winner is... Gluta Baker! Hey, two awards. Despite Booyah. missing five games this season due to injury, Buda Baker ranks second among Cardinals with 87 tackles this season, five for loss. It is his sixth consecutive season with 75 or more tackles. And he was also named to his sixth Pro Bowl and fifth consecutive selection at safety. All right, so Buddha is sweeping his way through the Wolf and Luke uh, Pigskin Awards. So, so now let's rank these, Wolf. Okay, I had Buddha Baker, just for the record, as my defensive player of the year as well. I, did I think we know, because you didn't say anything after. Yeah. <laughs> Wolf, Wolf finally agrees with a, a result. Rank these, okay, because we don't have Buddha here to accept the award. Yeah. Sixth Pro Bowl appearance. Wolf and Luke Pigskin Award for Defensive Player of the Year. Or Glue Guy. <laughs> what order do you think yeah. you put those in for Buddha? I think the Pro Bowls would not Pro, be Pro Bowl one. Yes, okay. And I cool. actually reached out to a consultant. Oh, nice. Okay. Calvisi Consulting. <laughs> oh, no. The Poly Pigskin Division says glue guys equal Dennis Gardeck, Greg Dortch, Roy Lopez, Jeff Swaim. Well, there you go. Wow, I know. Exactly. And Buddha Baker. <laughs> because we. As an academy, voted him as our glue guy. So I did reach out and I said, is Buda Baker a glue guy? And he said, uh, is it sweeps week? Are you trying to generate (laughs) sensational headlines? (laughs) That sounds like bowling. Wow, you guys hang out way too much. That sounds like bowling. You're starting to think alike, just so you know that. I just, no, it's just kind of funny right there. Poor Buda. (laughs) He must be depressed. For the record, I did not nominate Buda as the glue guy. Okay, great. All right. Um, So so wait a minute. Why was Kaiser White not a possible defensive player of the year? Uh, guy? A, he would have been probably my second choice, honestly. I mean, because he played 11 games, I would imagine, of course. I guess. I mean, I mean he was nominated for other stuff, though. Yeah. I, I mean, Jalen Thompson probably should have been. It, it, it should have gone Buddha, Jalen, Kaiser, in my mind. Because Jalen okay. Thompson's had a ridiculous year. He just kind of lives in Buddha's shadow. Yeah, he does. But Kaiser White is. I'm excited to have Kaiser White back on the team next year. Let's put it that way. Now it is time for Cardinals MVP of the year. Most valuable Cardinal. Let's go! And the nominees are... James Conner. And off Conner off the right side across the 25-30, 35-40. He's got 1,000 and more at midfield and steps out there. First 1,000-yard season for James Conner. Kyler Murray. Moving to his left, and he spins away from a defender, running to the right at the 25, at the 30, at the 40, at the 50, and dives to the 45-yard line. That's the Kyler Murray we remember. Buda Baker. And he's cut down at the 26-yard line by Buda Baker with a nice open field tackle, and then he punctuates it with a kip off. Trey McBride. Snap to Murray, he'll throw. Looks left, fires left in the end zone. It is caught by McBride, and it's a touchdown. 
And the winner is this. All players had votes, but the winner is James Conner. Oh. Hey, Wolf gets to go home happy. There it is right there for the first time. I agree with the Academy. And the MVP is James Conner. There can only be one. Could there be another? Honestly? I don't know. What would have happened if, if two people were tied? That would have just... I would have given out another sheet of paper for someone else to vote. Okay. So, right. for the most part, you know, again, no offense to Buda Baker, who is a great player, one of my favorite guys to watch play the game of football. Well, you can't be glue guy and MVP. That would you, be weird. you can't be glue guy and MVP. No, that's that's too much. Time. Too much that's range. exactly right. <laughs> but um, Kyler Murray didn't play in enough games. James Conner did. 13 games. Rushed for over 1,000 yards. It's not only his physical impact that he had in games as well, but when you go 4-13... and 13, you need somebody to lead in a 4-13 and 13 locker room. And it's very, very tough. And James Conner was that guy. He rallied everybody and made everybody around him better. Well, yeah, with his words, with his action, with his play on the field. I think it is fitting that he got 1,000 yards for the first time in his career. It's still kind of surprising to me that it's the first time of his career. But at the same time, James Conner is not like a guy that's just breaking off 50-yard runs. He's not He's not Devin Achan in, in Miami where it's like, hey, how did this guy just – he got a, 130 yards on six carries or whatever. He is, and this is what I like about him, it doesn't matter who they're playing, he'll get you the yards that you need. And that's, that's how, to me, you sum up James Conner on the field. Whatever amount of yards you need, he's going to get them for you and – it was cool to see him get a thousand and have that big game uh, in the final week of the season against Seattle. Here's James Conner. This is after that game. This is not after he got his uh, his Wolf and Luke MVP award. Yeah, it's just uh, I think it's just something that comes with it. You know, when you handle your business day in and day out, and then you know, I think it's my seventh year. You know, I'll be going into year eight next year, accepting every challenge that comes with it. You know, and always wanting to be a leader. And uh, you know, eventually, you you do this thing long enough, you play long enough in the league. That role just comes to you, you know, if the guys start looking for how you did it for, you know, at a high level for a while. So it just comes with it. And I accept that challenge and responsibility. Yeah, you know, and one of the things I loved about James Conner, too, he had some explosives. There's no doubt about it. He oh, yeah. had explosive plays. Um, he averaged five yards a carry. <laughs> That's really hard to do. You get the ball over 200 times and you're averaging five yards a carry. Yeah. It says an awful lot about the offensive line. Run, 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 run. That hurts my throat even now, based on what it means. <laughs> but I love that. I love the explosiveness. And not only that, too, with James Conner. 57 first downs. Carried the ball 57 times of those 208. 57 times of those 208 carries. He actually move the chains and you get what i'm That's saying huge. right like a thousand yards but i, I want to make sure i say this the right way he's not the guy that like you're right he had he had big chunk plays he had a couple big chunk plays on sunday but he's not the guy where it's like hey that guy had 85 yards uh rushing uh yesterday uh 63 of them came on right. one play and then he had right. 20 carries for 20 yards <laughs> right. it feels like he got a thousand yards 1049 yards on 208 carries and, and you're the you average five it feels like yes. he got five yards every single carry yes. like it feels like he spread them out of all the players in the nfl the only ones to go over a thousand yards rushing this season and average at least five yards per carry were Christian McCaffrey, Kyron Williams, and James Conner. Wow. Wow, that says an awful lot right there. And if you listen to Paulie, Paul Calvisi, of course, Paulie's down on the sideline. And that's where he belongs, basically. He's <laughs> down on the sideline with a belt high perspective. Yet at the same time, if you listen to Paulie, Paulie will tell you that James Conner is screaming much of the time on the sidelines. He's yelling. He brings the intensity to this offense and you cannot measure how important that is based on needs you cannot it is critical to an offense or a defense that you got a guy who brings that emotion and that passion and that's james connor i'll say it again if you if you had your whole team where everybody on offense had 
James Conner's mentality and everybody on defense had Buda Baker's mentality. That's a pretty good football team right there. Run. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.